Hey guys, what's up? This is Da Tou Leong. And in this video, I'll show you how immortal players make calculated moves and comes out on top. The game started with a cheeky rune steal, followed by a bounty that is walking up our high ground. Here are two plays that can happen. One, we go back to our lane like obedient children. Two, we can do some damage to the bounty hunter walking up our high ground. Bounty's Jinada steals 12 gold at level 1. If the bounty hit me, I lose 12 gold. If I hit the bounty, stifling dagger, hit him again, disrupt the thunder strike, and wrecking him too, he will most likely lose 3 to 400 HP, and that is not worth 12 gold, so we turn and take the trade. Necro is a very strong laner. If I were to fight him one on one, I am most likely going to lose. Disruptor does outrange and outnukes a Necroforce at level 1, so he positioned himself at the top side of the lane to fight the Necroforce while I farm from the bottom side of the lane. At the same time, shielding the Disruptor from the Bounty Hunter so he gets to fight the Necroforce one on one without any disturbance. Here, the bounty hunter is going to try to contribute to the lane by stealing our goal. There are 3 radiant creeps and 3 dire creeps. If I were to take the trade now, Necro will overpower us because he will kill himself, the bounty and 3 creeps. So we both scatter to avoid taking damage and bait the bounty deeper into the creep wave. The bounty decided to hit the disruptor, the necro falls back for the creeps, and we are in no position to take any creep damage. If the bounty were to hit the disruptor, the disruptor will lose 12 gold. If we were to fight the bounty right now, he will eat auto attacks from two heroes, thunder strike, stifling dagger, and auto attack from a ranged creep, so we take the trade. Bounty just lost more than half his health points for 12 gold and we completely won the trade in the first wave. The second wave is here and the Disruptor is still trading with the Necro one on one while I farm. The Bounty Hunter is coming in for a gold steal once again so we are going to do the exact same thing we did on the first wave. Fall back, bait the bounty into the creep wave. Once the bounty hit me and steal 12 gold, he will take damage from thunder strike, stifling dagger, auto attack from two heroes, and the entire creep wave. The Necroforce is now completely alone and we are both level 2. The Necro is level 2 but we took damage from Heartstopper Aura and that means that Necro do not have Ghost Shroud skilled so we made the call to kill him. We wanted to execute this kill without pushing the lane into the Necroforce so I make sure that the Radiant Creep is aggro to the Dire Creep so there is a good distance between Necroforce and his Creep before I make the jump. Instead of throwing the dagger first, I'm going to get on top of the necro first, then only use the dagger when he wants to retreat, so I maximize the full slow duration. Kill is secured and the lane is now impossible for necroforce to play. 24 minutes in and we lost a top tower and a mid tower. We took the bottom tower and now the game plan is to take the enemy's mid tower. If we were to push the middle tower from the middle lane, it is likely that the enemy flank us from the side or defend the tower from their side of the high ground. So instead of doing that, I farm my way from the bottom lane to the middle lane so I get to chase the enemy heroes away and make space for the middle tower. Since there are no enemies in the jungle, we know that the enemies are all on the top side of the map. And if we go for this lifestealer kill, the enemy cannot flank us and the heroes will slowly TP into their deaths. The mid tower is now gone and the next objective is Roshan. For Roshan to work, we need to chase enemy heroes away from the top side of the map so they can't hijack the Roshan pit from the top side of the map. As we are going for a smoke play, multiple couriers were spotted and their flight paths help us pinpoint the exact location of the enemy. With the Aegis, we are confident to go up the high ground. Necroforce showed for a split second and Batrider made the jump. I got rooted and the Necro is out of range, so I'm forced to Manta early. In order to finish Necro off, I have to eat the blood right and get silence for it. 
Necro did not die and managed to use Ghost Shroud. Bat Rider got ruptured and Bounty is respawning. Ogre popped my Lincoln but rupture is already used so I'm going for the Necro kill. We ran out of creeps for the push so I'm going to blink out and retreat temporarily. Lifestealer is spotted coming in. We still have Echo Slam so I'm going to bait. Puck coiled the Bloodseeker and for some reason the Lifestealer didn't want to take out my Aegis so I have a second chance to bait for the Echo. Lifestealer Rage ran out and Shaker timed the Echo perfectly and got 3 heroes. Disruptor follow up with a nice Static Storm and we took out the Lifestealer as well. The team fight was executed neatly by the team but we didn't end up getting the Rex because of the wave spam and the buybacks. It's 30 minutes in and we are trying to maintain map control while waiting for Roshan. Radiant smoked out and caught my Earthshaker. I can't take down Lifestealer or Bloodseeker instantly because the Shaker is silenced and without stun, they will just outrun me so I have to wait for Batrider and Park. Disruptor tried to Static Storm 2 heroes but mistimed it so I have to get out. Lifestealer went in this and we still have Lasso and Koi to play around so we made the call to fight. For me to kill anyone, I need to play with either the Park or Bat Rider and make use of their disables. Lifestealer breaks me with Silver's Edge, Park caught two supports, and Bat Lasso the Bloodseeker all at the same time. Rupture is the most annoying ability here, so Bloodseeker is my primary target. Bat put the Bloodseeker out of my range. I do not have enough damage because I am broken, the Blood Rite is about to explode, and my Lincoln is broken. I have to Manta and get out of the Blood Rite before I get ruptured. The situation is looking pretty bad. We use a lot of ultimates and we haven't killed anyone so I need to try to get out. I got rooted so I'm going to try to hit Ogre for lifesteal. Ogre is the only hero with slow and stun here so I have to blink away from the Ogre. Hold up, you guys might be wondering, why did I buy Manta into Lincolns instead of the usual Deso BKB? This is the Yatoro build. If you are playing against very straightforward disabled heroes, Deso into BKB will do a lot of damage and it's a very straightforward way to play the hero. In this game, I'm playing against Track, Reaper Scythe and Rupture. All of those go through BKB. Rupture is the most common PA counter and I have to avoid it at all costs. Manta can be used to confuse single target heroes and Lincolns will make it harder for them to lock me down. Here is the damage comparison between the build. Threads Fury Deso does over 1000 DPS at level 14. Threads Fury Corrosion Manta style does about 7 to 800 DPS at level 14. Deso is the stronger DPS build, but damage is nothing if I cannot survive. The Manta Lincoln's build is usually used to play against extremely single target lineup where BKB isn't the direct answer to survive. Dyer is now attempting high ground so I tip it into the fog and prepare for a counterplay. They managed to catch my bat and my Earthshaker before the defense, so it's now down to 2v5. Bloodseeker is pretty far away and we need to take out one target before they regroup, so the call was to YOLO the Necro. Disruptor sacrificed himself to Static Storm the Necro because he have the buyback. Bloodseeker is still far away so I do not need to pop Manta yet. And yes, when I'm watching this replay, the Bloodseeker did not have Rupture here but I didn't know about that at that moment and I'm still constantly looking out for it. Lincoln's is broken and I'm vulnerable to Rupture, so Manta. Necro is dead and Park is 5 seconds from respawning. I need to survive until Park gets here so I fake an illusion. To make sure I completely sell the fake, I'm going to micro only one illusion to run in and run out. I am now silenced but it doesn't matter. The illusion is soaking all the spells and the rage is wearing off. Park is back, Lincoln's is coming off cooldown and both Rupture and Rage is on cooldown so we clean up the fight. Well that's it for this game, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more of inside of my series, please help me like this video and maybe get it to 2000 likes, shout out to my sugar daddies for supporting the channel, if you want to see more short form content you can follow my instagram, if you want to chat with the community you can join my discord, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.